Hey guys, just time on Deep Junk Garage. It is time for build off. This is a TV and movie car build off. Uh, this was spearheaded by our buddy over at uh, Opaws Diecast Rex and Restorations. And you know when they say it rains, it pours. Well, on this build, it poured several times. Um, looking around, I, I wanted to do Rockford's Firebird bad. Um, I had this Yachtman car uh, for quite a long time, and I've looked at it several times and thought, I should make it uh, Jim Rockford's 77 Firebird. Well, let's start with the fact that it was a Trans Am. So it's going to need to lose the shaker hood, the fender vents, the T-top detail, and the rear spoiler. Um, so I decided that that's not going to be a problem. We'll go at it with a, a uh, get it with a file and a vengeance, and I will smooth this thing out, and I will reverse engineer and modify a Trans Am to be a Firebird. Now, to start, also, this car was bent. Not only was it a Trans Am, but it was a bent Trans Am, and it was from the factory that way. It has a, uh, oh, a suspension piece that rides uh, front to rear in the chassis. It's plastic. It acts like a, a suspension piece that holds the axles in, like much like an old matchbox. Uh, it has a post in the center of the chassis that's peened over and holds the plastic piece in. If you look under the suspension of the car, or under the chassis here, and you see right there behind the transmission there is a dent downward. Well, the car was peened, when they peened that over, it bent the, the whole bottom of the car up. It still rides a bit high in the back. It rode really high before. Um, the doors never opened and shut right on this car from day one and it was almost impossible it was impossible for me to get them done in time so the, do the doors are affixed shut on this car I, and that made me mad because I really wanted to have opening and closing doors on this to get see you know a little bit more of the interior it's just cool um, it took me uh, the most part of two weeks just to get the chassis to where all four wheels would sit on the ground at the same time and I was uh, measuring uh, actually like a real car wheelbase side to side to get the chassis right and it still does sit high in the back I measured the body off the car going from corner to corner uh, crossways on the rocker panels so measuring it over crossways to get the body to where it was somewhat square. So that was what rain shower number two, besides it being a, a Trans Am and a blue Trans Am, but light blue Trans Am made in Hong Kong. It was a bent blue Trans Am made in Hong Kong. Uh, and then let's start with the uh, problems with filming. I filmed some of the build of the car the uh, first part uh, was lost along with some footage of my uh, shop truck for next week's shop truck challenge. Um, so I picked up and about halfway through the build, uh, finished filming on this car, had all the D, uh, all the uh, end work done, you know, cut it for time, got uh, all the you know, good text and stuff laid in, had the video done and lost everything again. Pictures, video, PDF files, you name it, it's gone. Um, along with the shop truck. So, uh, I'm back filming again. I have a few pictures of when the car was, uh, I'll be dropping in, I, you know, uh, when the car was before I took it apart I should say and then when I started uh, to take off the shaker scoop and some of the roof detail um, 
I didn't want to do this way, but I'm not going to back out. This was a deal that I agreed to, and this build is is done. So we're regardless of what video we have, I'm I'm bringing it to you guys. With that out of the way, the seventy seven Firebird. Uh, from the Rockford Files. Got to be one of the most, besides the Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am, one of the most recognized Firebirds in the world. Uh, the television show, The Rockford Files, run, ran from uh, September of 74 through, uh, I think, January of 1980. Throughout the show, they used uh, cars from 74 to 78. Uh, the 79 and 80 gen, uh James Garner did not like the style of that car. His Firebirds throughout the uh, show were all Formula Firebirds dressed down as a Sprees. Uh, this way they had the 400 engine with some more horsepower, better handling, and better to do uh, the stunt driving in. James Garner did all about all his own stunt driving and uh, other stunts. Um, he liked the uh, Formula Firebird uh, he had owned a Trans Am at the same time that he was working on the show and said that he liked the uh, Formula Firebird because it handled better, it was better to fling around and do stunts in. So all the cars were uh, dressed down as regular Firebirds. The uh, color used on the cars was not a uh, Pontiac color, it was something they called Sierra Gold and they had painted it that color to look better on TV after doing a lot of research and looking around, every picture is different uh, in just the way it's taken. The shows, you know, the depending on where you're watching it on TV, on uh, the internet, it, the, the color on there is always different. So uh, I took an educated guess and actually found a GM color later on in the years in the paint chart called Sierra Gold. This is the color. I didn't darken it. I didn't lighten it. I didn't do anything but paint it, paint it over uh, gray primer. So, uh, James Garner ran 70, they ran 74 uh, through 78. The 74 car, I have read 75 through 78 were formulas but the 74 car, I'm going to guess, was also a formula because I've seen pictures of it and it does have a 400 engine badge uh, on the fender, below the fender line, the middle of the fender line, about where a Formula 400 badge would be. So the engine designation uh, badge was still on the car. I don't believe, I love the show and I don't believe another actor could have done it like James Garner, like I said, with his input as far as the cars, his attitude to the character, doing the stunts, it, uh, to me that was the only actor there could have been. Um, the rest of the car, the build on it, um, the M2 wheels, I cannot recall where I got the uh, white wall tires. Uh, the interior is the factory interior, just painted tan. Um, again, the uh, Sierra Gold uh, had uh, taken the hood scoop off, the shaker scoop, fender vents, and again the uh, T-top detail and the spoiler off the back. The spoiler for the rear, uh, that trunk lid, I think came out pretty damn nice for chopping that off and then recutting the... Uh, the lines down the quarter panels to make the trunk line. Um, it does, if you look over here, that bumper line and how high that sits, um, that is the only, that's, well that's the problem with that chassis. And that's sitting down now. The uh, only other oops broke building the car, um, bending that, you know, Anybody who's worked on these knows that these uh, these bodies, the uh, Zymac, whatever you want to call it, pot metal, it breaks. It doesn't bend, it breaks. And bending the car all around the 
the little uh, headlight uh, and grill piece on the driver's side that had busted off and I had to glue that back in. Other than that guys, the car, the paint, you know, just kind of fell right into place. But it, something had to fall into place after after it poured on this build like, you know, four or five times. Um, I'm very proud of the car. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy to bring it to you guys now. And uh, I, like I said, I really like the TV show. It, it wasn't one of my favorites. It's my favorite, so it just seemed like the the, the car to do. And I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody checking in on it. Uh, this build off was uh, pretty fun. I thank uh, Opa for uh, spearheading this and uh, all the other guys. I know they're going to have some uh, some good looking cars too. Thanks everyone again for checking in. Thanks to subscribers. Any uh, new subscribers coming on, I thank you. Um, this has been, uh, I'm sorry again, like I said, that uh, didn't have much to go with, but I signed up for this, so a video is going to be done one way or the other. And thank you all, and I'll see you guys in the next one.